Hello, I'm Washington Wedderburn, and I'm a product manager with ANSYS uh, Digital Mission Engineering Group. Um, today, we're going to uh, introduce a new, uh, not product, but capability um, to an existing product. Uh, we recently uh, released our RF channel modeler, and uh, today we're going to talk about an extension to that product that brings uh, an addition to the communications capabilities. Um, we're going to actually talk about the new radar features that are now part of the RF channel modeler. Um, today with me is JP Ploshnitsnik. I screwed that up big That's time. Good. <laughs> it's it's Ploshnitsnik. And I have some ways of remembering that, you know, and like schnitz is like schnitzel, and mm -hmm. I am from Austria. So, You're right. <laughs> so, Plo Schnitznik. Plo Schnitznik. You can call me Mr. Plo Schnitznik. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, JP is our uh, director for sensor systems. Um, JP officially joined uh, AGI, or our ANSYS government initiatives, in 2021. But prior to then, JP had a very long history uh, with using SDK going back some three decades. Um, JP's career began as an officer in the U.S. Air Force, where he served for, for nine years. Uh, he subsequently moved into commercial aerospace, uh, where he was intimately involved with support for many DOD and Intel community uh, radar applications. Um, JP has been pretty instrumental in bringing this, this new capability to fruition. Um, so I'll, I'll turn it over to him now to give everyone an overview of what we think is a, a pretty uh, revolutionary capability when it comes to maximizing returns from radar operations. Oh, no pun intended. You got that all. <laughs> That's really illuminating. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so I guess uh, in uh, the past uh, few months, you heard a lot about RFCM from Sean Carpenter and uh, Nate McBee. Uh, this capability is a really, really uh, very, very robust agnostic solution to try to understand what happens when you emit energy from a transmitter to a receiver? And that can be applied to comms, can be applied to any kind of uh, uh, signals uh, propagation, or in, in my specific area, the radar world. I want to go ahead and understand uh, what, what Sean cared about was how does energy rattle through that canyon, that very, very busy urban canyon, to the receiver, okay? I care about, I want to see the canyon. I want to see everything inside there. So our solution basically uses the exact same backbone, exact same system, and we use STK, uh, our digital mission engineering, to orchestrate everything. We can go in there and, and put those pieces of the puzzle into that world and then turn on the transmitter and listen to the receiver and says, tell me what's going on with the signal coming back in. What's happening with the scattering, okay? so. The, the whole uh, phase two of our effort was uh, was dedicated to trying to set up the radar configuration settings, the radar products. You're going to see a lot of ISAR, SAR, if you're familiar with those terms, of basically looking at targets in a wideband image mode, or look at these big, beautiful, large scenes of, you know, stadiums, cities, landscapes, and that kind of stuff is very, very important in today's world. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, you know, based on your your history of working with with radar applications over the years, um, you know, what are some are, or, or who are some of the individuals and or organizations that you see benefiting the most from having this type of capability? That, that's a good question. I mean, people always ask you that. Well, who's going to benefit from synthetic data generation for radar systems? Right. Uh, well, I think what you're going to see when we offer this RFCM radar solution. It basically supports three primary customers, the three primary you know, reasons why we care about this. So the first one really is uh, the imagery analysts, maybe the intelligence community, helping them understand if I'm going to do a collection against a certain target, against a certain area, what do I expect to see? When you look at synthetic aperture radar data, look at radar image, they refer to it as blobology, okay? And, and after a while, it's like being in the matrix. I don't gotta look <laughs> in the scene, I just see the little <laughs> pixels and I can see things inside there. But that's great when you're a seasoned radar engineer, but when you're still a, a young, novice uh, radar engineer in, in, uh, in training or an analyst in training, you wanna be able to show somebody, you know, if you look at it this way, this is what you should expect. So it's great for training. If, if you have a collection and something looks really funny, okay, 
Let me re reproduce it because I think I know what's going on, but it helps you in re event recreation and hypothesis, you know, confirmation, validation of your thought process. The, the second area is collection planning. As you know, the community right now, every time the U.S. government builds a brand new system, big systems, they're required to go out to the test ranges. Test ranges are a very, very limited resource. People are lined up to go out there. So when you go out there for a test range measurement, it's going to cost you a lot of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars to millions of dollars. There's no reason why you can't create a virtual test range, a virtual environment. Recreate or produce or pre-plan what you expect to see happen tomorrow or what you know, afterwards, you can look at your data and actually understand why am I getting a funny return. That's great when you have a cooperative collection, but what about if you plan on looking into an area you're not allowed to gain access to? You're not allowed to look in that area or you're not allowed to be in that area, but I think something's going to happen. It lets me also get ready for that collection. So they refer to it as non-cooperative collections. So collection planning, uh, learning, but last of all, most exciting world right now is artificial intelligence machine learning. If you talk to anybody in the machine learning world, they're, they're starving for data. People refer to this as a, they need a data lake, okay? Uh, with this system, you can generate a data ocean. An endless amount of information, very, very well known, ground truth. So you can train your artificial intelligence uh, machine learning algorithms, okay? So there's a little project we'll talk about in the future coming up very soon. But the reality is you can now begin to use your synthetic data to help train your machine learning algorithms that when you apply it to this abundance of brand new systems, Capella, ISI, Umbra, all these new commercial vendors are, are giving the government data that they don't have time to go ahead and pour over. And they don't have analysts. So what do you do? People throw out, we use machine learning. Well, how are you going to train machine learning or artificial intelligence? with synthetic data or very, very well uh, documented ground truth data. That goes back to your initial point about uh, new analysts um, who aren't necessarily as experienced. Yeah. Having AI tools at their fingertips will greatly simplify the work that they have to do. And then your experts are there for the really hard problems, yeah. right? Right, so, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Right. Um, and then going back to your... Um, Collection planning, one of the things that's critical about those types of uh, activities is you need to get it right the first time because reflying those or, you know, whatever the case is, when you, when you, if you have to redo the test, it's <laughs> it's really, really expensive. You should be in this chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're absolutely correct, yeah, because the cost of test range is expensive. And even then, when you get, when you get, you get scheduled... You don't want to be uh, uh, lose your date and time because of bad weather. It's it's worse if you go ahead and go out there and do the measurement and you find that it did it wrong, right. or you could have done it better, and you've wasted now time and money and impacted the program. So it's a major cost savings. Absolutely, awesome and risk stuff. risk mitigator. Awesome stuff. Um, so taking a peek over the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> you kill me. Okay. In the communications right. realm, you know, we already we're already moving beyond five G and looking at six G applications. Yeah. Um, are there there are future scenarios where you see this type of radar capability bring being uh, valuable to bringing new stuff to the fore? Um, you know, I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. <laughs> covered that question. Yeah, I didn't yeah, plan yeah. for that one. Your <laughs> new stuff. Well, I guess uh, you don't know what you don't know. I said it's a typical intelligence, <laughs> yeah, right? right? So what, what you can do now is the beautiful part about this is actually going out there and saying, let's go ahead and step out of the box and go beyond what's currently happening with the systems. A lot of these radar systems in the SAR world are working at the X-band, uh, typical higher microwave frequencies, one gigahertz and maybe a little bit less bandwidth. What if you said, I'm going to put a brand new system up there, and it's going to be at 35 gigahertz or 100 gigahertz. Well, before you build that system, you can go and produce that data and go through it. And actually, with their digital mission engineering uh, software, STK, you can fly those scenarios and recreate everything that you think are realistic geometries you would expect to have in an operational implementation of that scenario. 
and generate data and see what it does for you. So there, the benefit of all this stuff is you can begin to explore and look into that future. Excellent. And that, you know, that highlights the value of simulation, right? Yeah, yeah. You can, I pulled that one right out. Right? Yeah, Amazing. man, that was great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Testing so, me, bro. Testing all me. right. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, JP. Appreciate the insight. Yeah. Um, so, you know, look forward to uh, the new release coming out uh, shortly. Um, uh you know, feel free to reach out to uh, anyone at ANSYS, your sales folks, uh, your ACE folks. Um, if you want to try it out, we're glad to have a conversation, let you know what uh, what's capable. So cool. thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, watch how you think it went. Oh, that was awesome. That was awesome. Oh, man. Man. And I love it. It's the <laughs> best thing. We're great. But you know how to celebrate this the best. Watch. We got to light, we gotta one, light up, right? one up. Are the camera still on?